young guy. The, like the, the Belgian said. press is waiting for you. Uh, yeah. Boy, yeah. Young guy. Yeah, yeah, George, <laughs> if, if you expect to go to Belgium this year, which I know you do, <laughs> I'm going. Very, I'm going. Very careful what you say right now. Uh, look, got, by, the way, by the way, I am not going to Belgium, so I'm going to say whatever I want to say. But George, just be real careful. <laughs> Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Move Podcast, talking about the 2024 cycling season. Not just the men's side, but also the women's side. It's shaping up to be, uh, yeah, uh, one to watch. Good for us. Good for you. Uh, I'm Lance Armstrong, sitting here in Austin, Texas, joined by J.B. Hager, also in Austin, down the street. J.B., I'll see you later. Thanks for picking uh, yeah. my little uh, audio box from the last show, too. You know, sometimes you just got to turn a knob and you things know, it's, get it's, repaired. It's, it's the most <laughs> fucked up these. Who put, by the way, who put, why do we need so many knobs? Like just, I'm, I'm just a dumb kid from Plano. Like give me like one knob, right? Over, over there in Madrid, the other JB, Johan Brunil, who definitely knows what to look for in the 2024 season. And all the way over there in the Carolinas, it's George Hincabby. George, what's up? Hello, guys. Good to be back on the show. Johan and I just finished a really fun uh, show with Ekimov, the legend of the sport, a uh, teammate of ours, and uh, we just wrapped that up a couple hours ago, so it was super fun to catch up with him. Guy had an amazing career. You know, I, I remember as being a, a, even as a junior, you know, he was, they were, everybody was talking about Eki. His name is Vacheslav Ekimov. Other people call him Ekimov, but those who were close to him like we were, we just call him Eki. Um, you, you've, you've heard us talk about him a lot. Um, of course, uh, you know, look at Johan's shirt, right? Seeing the douches, right? That was, that's his quote. Uh, that, that was, yeah. we, we'll just call it an Eckyism. Yeah. Uh, and that's, so be sure to check, yeah, check that's that. That's how we wrapped up. That's how we wrapped up the show was we had him explain to see you in the douches. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so it was fun. It's, it's definitely, yeah. I mean, it's going to be out in about uh, a week. But uh, definitely want to, you know, you won't, you won't want to miss the stories. They're amazing. Yeah. yeah. Well, we get a lot of questions like, what does that even mean? Isn't that strange? You made shirts that like seems a little <laughs> risque. So yeah, l l listen to the show. You know, you just needed a guy from St. Petersburg who, who spoke broken English to give us something that we said for a very long time. Yeah. There it is. Uh, before we jump into all the action and all the stuff that we've, um, that's on our radar for 2024, Today's show brought to you by Zwift. We are in the middle of indoor cycling season and the We Do Club is popping with over 1,500 members joining our weekly rides. That's either We Do Wednesday, which is a casual cafe ride, or Suffer Sunday, specifically for our fellow Suffer lovers. There's never been a better time to get started riding indoors with Zwift. Zwift Smart Trainer, the Zwift Hub, is now at better value than ever. For only 599 bucks, not only do you get a smart trainer with a pre-installed cassette of your choice for a no-fuss setup, but you also get a one-year of Zwift. Check this out. You also get free shipping when you enter the code ZWIFTHUB at checkout. There's more to do on Zwift than ever before. Join us for either We Do Wednesday or Suffer Sunday. Head on over to Zwift.com to grab your Zwift Hub. And don't forget that code ZWIFTHUB for free shipping. Also today brought to you by Bicycle. Bicycle has evolved the way pre-owned bikes are bought and sold. They're a band of riders building a community who expect more from their bike marketplace, more security, clarity, and more connection. Selling a bike has never been easier based on the bike brand, model, or condition. Their algorithm suggests a selling price to help you move your bike quickly, and our template makes it easy to create a listing, check this out, in less than three minutes. Sellers can opt in to receive a bike box and packaging materials sent directly to your door. Bicycle also manages logistics by supplying shipping labels, and we coordinate pickup at your address, so no need to dig through the dumpster at the local bike shop for a bike box. I, I mean, that's for real. Bike boxes are impossible to get. Anyways, uh, if you're thinking about selling your bike, you got a pre-owned bike, uh, check it out. Head on over to Bicycle. That's B U Y C Y C L E dot com. Bicycle dot com. Enter the code We Do Twenty Four. That gets rid of the seller fee. Again, that's Bicycle dot com. Use the code We Do Two Four Twenty Four. Let's talk about speaking of two Two Four. Yeah, 
see what they did there. Uh, let's talk about 2024. How do Johan, how do you want to go about that? You, is this a thing we, we, we touch on, you know, store highlights or you want to go chronologically? Uh, how, how's this go? Well, I would like to, you know, a few things. We, I think we should, uh, look at the classics, look at the grand tours, and look at the championships, the, the worlds and this year, also the Olympics. I think those are the three main focuses of the season. Uh, but first I would like to, um, get your guys opinion on, you know, we've talked about the, the trades and transfers and how the, the transfers could impact the, the season. Um, and, and if we look at one of the main, I mean, since one of the main riders, one of the big four, as I would like to call them, has changed teams, I'd like to have your opinion on how that could change the 2024 season. We're talking about Primoz Roglic, who left Jumbo Visma, went to Bora Hans Grohe, who is now uh, partly taken over by Red Bull, by the way. Um, so um, what do you guys think will change uh, for the Grand Tours with Primoz, have, Primoz being his the sole leader of the team, focusing you exclusively on the Tour de France and having his former Jumbo Visma guys as rivals? I think it's a huge change. I, I, I think, and I think, um, look, Primoz Roglic is not, as much as I love the guy, the, the calendar doesn't lie. He's just not getting younger, right? This comes, uh, you know, for my uh, taste, maybe a year or two late, but um, mm -hmm. th he's not getting younger. I, I love the move. Um, I, I think this is a perfect setup for fans. I think, you, you, and let's not forget, not only do you have Roglic going to another team racing against his old team, so you have him truly independent, but you have uh, Remco, right? So you, if you, if you want to talk about the tour, now you have four stars, let's just call it for now, of course, the season changes all those things a and four different teams. Uh, I think it's perfect. Yeah, I'm thinking the same thing. I'm I'm, I'm uh, going over the scenario of last year's first mountain stage up in Mari Blanc. We got Jai Hindley up the road um, and you have uh, Vindigo and Pogachar fighting behind. Now I'll throw in uh, Primoz Roglic on the same team as Jai Hindley with the amount of climbers that Bora has on their team. I really see uh, this, this huge potential for um, a strength in numbers, some not strength in numbers sort of situation with Bora. And for me, it's going to make the tactics, the racing so much more exciting to have Primoz on another team. And yes, he's getting older, but the guy pretty much won every race he did last year and now throw on a team that's 1000% behind him. Uh, it's going to be uh, fireworks in my opinion. Yeah. Plus add to that, that I think Bora is year after year building stronger and stronger totally agree uh, they have already announced their tour de france team nowadays you know they just do that all <laughs> the main teams just announced their tour de france team in january already and if you look at the list they presented it's scary uh, you know they they are equal <laughs> if not stronger than 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 jimbo and or visma and and uae uh, strange we're not talking about the Neos anymore <laughs> uh, as being one of the the power teams but uh but i think it's going to be interesting and, and you know we, we we've read in the news in the last few weeks that they have this new partner um or new owner now new co-owner uh red bull so i wonder how that's going to impact you know the 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 functioning of the team it's obviously more resources and we know that these guys you know they they don't fool around they want no. you know, the best of the best so um, I'm, I'm curious to see, but I think Bora is going to be a big factor in the, in the grand tours. Uh, I hundred percent agree. And I think the Red Bull component, it, I don't think this is, the, I love how you teed that up, Johanna. Like we were going to talk about some random sponsor that nobody had ever heard about. Uh, I, I don't think they do anything just to slap their logo on a Jersey or mm. a helmet or on a team bus or any marketing materials. I, I think they do it um the right way and, and and it's funny you can look at the brand of red bull and you think it's a an energy you just call it branded an energy drink it really isn't i mean they've invested in sports science and and sports physiology since the beginning i've, I've been to their facility in santa monica it is next level right this is a, this is a pro teams sports science center and they have an entire staff there of sports scientists and sports physiologists like they aren't they're not playing around this is not again this is not a sticker on a helmet i, I think and, and you know coming off uh, off of last season when uh, you know cycling had their netflix special and everybody in cycling thought boy we're going to be as big as f1 but, well that didn't happen but 
I think that the entree or, or, or the, the start of this Red Bull era could be something, right? I, I, I see that and get real excited. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I agree. It's an it's a established brand that has spent hundreds of millions of dollars on the biggest sports in the world. So for them to go all in into a cycling team, yeah, we've seen it on, on uh, like Lance mentioned, stickers on helmets up until now with some of the best riders. But them, for them to take over a team, I think it's 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 a great sign for the viability of the sport, and uh, like Lance said, it might be a start of of a change that uh, we can witness firsthand. Just just I, and, and and we touched. Sorry, JB, right quick. I just as just to, I mean, I uh, just so everybody's clear, I'm clear and everybody can understand. I mean, uh, Primus Roglic is 34 years old. That's and we spend how much time do we spend in amazement at how young this peloton has gotten? Mm-hmm. He is the anomaly. Um, and yes, he, he had a fantastic season and and seemingly won everything that he entered except, you know, the tour de France. Um, but still right. 34 is 34. And, and at this generation of these gen, this generation we're watching with all these young guys, it, this is the year it has, I still to think, be, it has to be 2024. I think he still has it. I think, I think he still has it. He was on an amazing level, uh, into 2023, you know, came late to the sport. So I think that's, that's an advantage. The guy, you know, basically took everything he knows, all like experience from, from Jumbo and now will apply his experience on, on Bora, add that with all the resources they have. Um, you know, we have, we had two of the older guys uh, of the Peloton dominating the, the, the Giro, you know, like Geraint Thomas was, Geraint Thomas is even, is 37 and he was still up there. So I still think it's possible as long as, as the mind follows. Mm. Um, but yeah, but listen, let's, um, you know, this, this about change in teams. I think that's the major change. Uh, we've seen that, uh, Jumbo probably, I mean, they got, they got a few stronger guys on, on board UAE, I think got stronger. Uh, they, they hired a few interesting guys, but let's start with, uh, with the classics, you know, classics, Milan San Remo, Tour of Flanders, Paris Roubaix, Dies Bastogliers to name the spring classics. What are we gonna? What are we gonna expect? Will we see the same guys as always? I mean, basically, it's been until now, especially for Flanders and Roubaix, it's like the Van der Poel Van Art show, right? Uh, those two guys against each other. Um, um, Pogacar has decided that he's not doing Flanders, and Van Art has decided he's not doing Milan San Remo. So Van Art is an interesting project, in my opinion. You know, he he compromised his cyclocross season purely in function of the classics. And he focuses on Flanders and Roubaix as a Belgian. Those are the races he kind of has to win. Yep. So what do we, what do we expect there? Well, we have, we have a resident uh, expert in the classics. Why don't we ask him? <laughs> well, yeah, I was going to say, I mean, up, up until now this season, uh, Van der Poel has been unbeatable for the most part. Sure. Van Aert beat him in that one cycle cross race in Benidorm, but he crashed and as did Van Aert, they both crashed, but He's been unstoppable, and I'm, I'm sure, like you guys mentioned, uh, Spencer, and you mentioned on the show that at Worlds, he probably he didn't even look like he was going full gas the whole time, and still rode away from everybody, um, like on a total different level. Uh, so yeah, it's coming on to the classics. I do like Van Art's approach, where you know he's been a bit more quiet. Uh, he's yeah. he's got his his goals well known, and uh, you know I'm 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 thinking I like that I like that approach a lot. And he's got a new coach. He's 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 uh, he's he's working differently towards the season. He knows the race really well. He's got an incredible team behind him, uh, arguably perhaps a bit stronger than um, Vanderpool's team with the classics. Uh, so I'm, I'm liking uh, Van Art's uh, approach so, thus far. I'll add to that name. We haven't mentioned uh, Pidcock, who also passed on Cyclecross Worlds with other ambitions for the season. Where do you put him? He's, and I thought he's been mentioning more of a, a run at the GC at the Tour de France and doing more stage races and can never count out Pickcock though. I mean, if he wants to go for Flanders or Roubaix, he's, 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 he can, he's a rider that can do it all. Um, but everything that I've heard so far is that he wants to put more of an emphasis on, on GC riding this year. Johan, what have you heard? I, well, I think, I think Pitcock's going to probably focus on Liege Baston Liege. I think that's what he's smart, you know, because it's going to be difficult for him to beat Van der Poel and Van Aert in, uh, in, in the, the cobbled classics. Agreed. Liege Baston Liege is, is an ideal race for him. Um, I've read that. You know, he's not, he, he's not, he doesn't have the ambition to win the Tour de France next year, but he wants to see where he can get. And he said something interesting. He said, I, I want to see if I can get top five. 
Um, personally, I think that's possible, but then, you know, we have this, it's a special season and, and especially we have these, uh, you know, multidisciplined riders who, you know, then focus on, on the Olympics for the mountain bike, for example, in both Thunderpool and Pitcock, uh, Pitcock for sure. Vanderpool is not sure yet, but they, they're going for the, the mountain bike in the Olympics, which is not very much after the Tour de France. So um, I think we have to look at the season until the Tour and then whatever happens after the Tour, uh, we don't know with those guys, right? But um, Pitcock's an interesting one. Um, I think he has a huge potential um, also for the Tour de France, in my opinion. Um, but, he, but he needs to, I mean, he will need to make a choice. He will need to make a choice and focus on it. He can, you know, he can climb. He's, you know, he's, he has a lot of resistance. He can time trial too. Um, I even think he was world champion time trial at some point in the juniors. Um, uh, he, I mean, <clears throat> you know, he, he, look, he, he, I think he can easily win the mountain bike, the Olympics at the mountain bike, or the, I'm sorry, the mountain bike race at the Olympics, right? He, mm -hmm. He should focus on that, right? I mean, who cares if you get fifth in the Tour de France? Yeah, and you're, that's, you, know that's how, true. you know how the you know how the Brits are. They love, boy, <laughs> gold medals in England. The man that that's they're, well, they're a big deal anywhere, but they're really a big deal in England. That's, yeah. <laughs> have uh, you guys? Have you guys? Especially, ever, especially when the road course at the, in Paris is is not that selective. He, you know, the mountain bike is the mountain bike. You can select whenever you want, and I would think that's a better use yeah. of his time. For Pitcock, I think it makes sense. You know, um, he is, I mean, and, and he has said many times, you know, actually Van der Poel also, it's, uh, mountain bike is their favorite discipline. Yeah. It's sad, for, sad, sad to hear for everybody else who gets their ass kicked by them in, in the cyclocross and on the road races. But um, no, I agree. Uh, Pitcock is uh, the big favorite, I think, for the mountain bike, for the mountain bike Olympic Games. What was that, JB? Do you guys ever recall having so much overlap with GC names and classic names ever in the history of cycling? Meaning we're talking about the same people. <laughs> yeah. You have to go um, back to the Eddie Merckx yeah, era. Yeah, and you before. Gotta way, you got to go way back. It, 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 that, that ended. It, I mean, he know did it right. I mean, he know one Roubaix, you know, yeah. was, could, could do those things, but that, that was, yeah, we no. The, to answer your question, no, it's been a long time, JB. No, in, in the in yeah, in the in the Marx era, for example, you had you know a guy like Ramon Poulidor winning Milan San Remo, Marx winning everything, Zutemark being in Paris Roubaix. Uh, you know, but after that, cycling has been, you know, more and more specific. And 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 these guys, all of us, I I still think it's very specific. These guys, these guys are just exceptions. Yep. Yeah. Uh, uh, this is kind of, uh, I'd probably lean on Johan for this, but who are some of those other outliers that, you know, like a Mahorich who can win a classic that, that we should be mentioning looking, going into the classics? No, nah, for sure. For sure. You know, I mean, we can't, we can't just be blinded by, okay, Van der Poel versus, versus Van Aert, you know, Mahorich, uh, Pogacar is doing Milan San Remo, not doing Flanders. Um, so you know, I think he can, he can win that a guy like, for example, a, a race like Milan San Remo, if it comes back together with 15, 20 people, a guy like Jasper Philipson could win it. I think he's probably one of the, he's the guy, a guy that I expect a lot from, um, this year, um, Dylan Van, Van Bar Dylan Van Barlow. Uh, Dylan also. Van Barlow yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Um, now with, now with Van Aert, so perhaps he gets the free card to play. Um, in, in, mm -hmm. in races like Flanders and Roubaix where you can sneak off the front and these guys sometimes can cancel each other, each other out. So if you have a good guy like that, they certainly are in the running for a win. Well, what we also, also have to have in mind is that, you know, some people could probably benefit from this huge war and rivalry between Van der Poel and Van Aert and them trying to get rid of each other, kill each other. And, and, at, and at the end, both of them run out, run out of legs. It could happen. It could happen. And then somebody who's sitting like a Von Barla, for example, like a Mohoric with one move can could go and, and, and win the race. Mm. Yeah. You know, and I remember we had this debate. It's been probably nine months. We, it, it, the, it was really between you, me and George, this debate over Van Art and Vanderpool. And, and we sort of took, the, George and I, I believe, took this position that Van Art was the superior rider and et cetera. And you took a really strong position that there was, it wasn't even close. That Vanderpool was far and away superior. More a born, I said he was more of a born winner. Yeah. And so ever since you said that, 
Let me ask you that question it's, again. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I, I'm, this is what I'm, I'm just recognizing and acknowledging that you, you were right as, as, as always. Uh, but ever since we had this debate or discussion, it's, it's just gone the other way. So I, I it, there's a big question mark on Ben Hart. Like, what, okay, I got it. You know, skip, you know, but, but dial back cyclocross, new trainer, et cetera, et cetera. Like, boy, how, how, I'm curious. Yeah. Well, let's not listen. You know, the, the, the cyclocross season is one thing. I think we should separate that completely from what's going to happen in the classics. It's, it's, it's not, it's irre irrelevant. Right. In right, my right, opinion. right. Right. right? Um, I think, I think Van Aert has realized that he needs to take a different approach and he, and he's doing it. So um, I'm curious to see. Um, I've seen sometimes in the in the big races, in the long races, that the last 10, 20 kilometers, he ran out of legs. Um, is he going to focus more on the endurance uh, and make sure that, you know, he, he races a little bit more conservatively? Um, you know, to Van Aert's advantage, Van, Van Der Poel is now in a position like he's the favorite. It's his race to lose. Right. Um so, I mean, I would love to see him win one of those races in Belgium, man. It's, it's, it's hard for Van Aert, man. It's, he's, everybody loves him, adores him, but then still the press is incredibly critical for him and saying, okay, you know, you're Walt Van Aert, you've done this or this, but Hey, you haven't won Flanders or Roubaix. So you're not a real Flandrian. <laughs> you <know>? Brutal. <laughs> it's yeah. crazy. Uh, that's when you should move South you know, guys. <laughs> the, how's Spain doing? Go down, look some real estate. Hang down here. Are they equally as as uh, tough on Remco? The press can be tough on Remco too. Um, yeah, yeah. The, listen, the Belgian cycling press is not easy. First, they right. build you up, and then as soon as you're there, they they're they're you're un under a magnifying glass basically, and everything you do and say is all. Oh, I mean, it's every every day. Be careful what you say because you know they listen quite uh, closely to what you say on our yeah, show. Yeah, but, yeah, but hey, I don't care, George. They yeah, can say whatever you want. Here, here it goes. <laughs> the next cue, the next obnoxious statement that will be the headlines in the Belgian papers. Oh, these fucking idiots! Yeah, oh, yeah. Fucking Belgian with these two, you know, three dumb dumb Americans. <laughs> oh God! Here it goes. We do well, have. I'm, a, I'm, I'm we excited do have to a see. huge following though. In the, the move, the move has a big following in uh, in Belgium and. Some of our, uh, whatever, much of what we say in our podcast become headlines in the Belgian newspaper. So it's good to see. Good to see. Uh, actually, yeah. most of the things you say become headlines <laughs> in the Belgian newspaper. We don't, we're out, we're out of this part, man. So and lay, we'll be, lay it we'll on us. Doing a move, we'll be doing a move in uh, the Park Hotel there in Courtrick right after a day. So yeah, and we'll be right yeah. there and we'll be right there amongst it all. It'll be uh -huh. exciting. But I was going to say that it's going to be, it's going to be fun to watch these preseason classic races, uh, you know, in the next month or so. The Paris Nice is uh, Terreno Adriatico, just to see exactly where these guys are laying on the road and um, who's doing what. And I think we're going to get a much clearer picture on the the the, the real favorites um, and the and the up and comers, the guys we haven't really mentioned yet. Uh, we're going to see some new names. We're going to see some new some new people, some new teams pop up, and it's going to make. You know the the picture of the 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 classics, the main classics, are even more exciting. I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, what should we do? what should we talk about next? Uh, the Grand Tours. Yeah, let's get into it. You, what, yeah. what did you say, Johan? You had it laid out. Well, you know, I said you know Pogacar for the double. Uh, I think this that's that's the interesting interesting fact of of this the season of the Grand Tours is that. He has announced that he goes to the Giro and then goes to the Tour, um, has cut considerably in, in, into his spring spring class, spring class classic season. Um, but still, you know, Pogacar is Pogacar. And when he puts a number on his back, he races. So right. um, uh, my question is, and something I don't have the answer for, uh, what's the real reason for Pogacar to go to the Giro? Right? Is it because he is interested in a legacy? He already won the Tour de France twice. He wants to win the Giro. I think the Vuelta. He could win that whenever he decides to participate. Um, is that the reason? Is no. it because? No, uh, it no, because... no, none of those are the reason. Okay. Well, I know I thought you were setting this up. This is a dumb question. I know. I know what you're going to say. My my next is the reason exactly. The exactly. paper, as George <laughs> says, he going for the paper. 
Now, <laughs> yeah. both, both things can also be true, right? You can go for the paper and you know, all you kids out there, you know what we're talking about, but for you old farts, that means a big fat check. You can go for the paper, but it's Pogachar. He's going to go for the paper and put a number on his back. When the number's on the back, he races, right? And and he doesn't know any. He just wants to get the finish line before anybody else. But I mean, it, or or, I mean, or is I, it? I, I've I've gone to the Giro for paper before. I know, right? So, um, or is it? Or is it the the third or fourth option we had to discuss is that they looked at Vindigo's numbers in the time trial, so to speak, last year's time trial. That were that much better than Pogachar, maybe not at 100, percent but clearly at like 95. percent And they might think if if Vin, if Vinny goes at his absolute best, then Pogachar might not be able to beat him. So maybe get a Giro win in, and then hope they get uh, to be able to beat him in the tour. But it could be that as well. But I know if it was paper for you, Lance, you it wouldn't have mattered. You still would have gone for the tour, and if it didn't fit in your schedule to to prepare. Uh, for the tour with the Giro, you wouldn't have done it no matter no matter the amount of money because the tour is still a lot bigger than the Giro, especially yep. for an American. Yeah. So you no, know, it was strategically it made sense that that particular year, but that was a weird year, right? That was a year that that never should have happened, and we were you know trying to catch up on being out of the sport for a few years. And but go back to ninety nine to five, never, never. I don't care what the paper was. Yeah. No way. Absolutely no way. But that's, but look, I'm not, I'm not, uh, that's just, uh, you know, that was our view and that was then, and this is now the sport's different, but I never yeah. had it. And I think with a guy, I mean, I would not, I would not put it past Pogaccio, you know, I mean, yes, George is true. Vingegaard was a lot better last year. We, I don't think we can judge Pogaccio on his performance of the tour of last year. He was, you know, I think his injury in the Edmaston Liege was a big factor. Um, then you know the 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 panic course to get back to a certain level to be ready for the tour i think that took a stall plus i think his way too aggressive riding in the beginning of the tour uh was a bit of a of a mistake so uh combine that with the fact that that Vingegaard was just on another level um but I, I I I think Pogacar can bounce back, man. I mean, uh, he's he's up there, you know. He's he's close to to Vingegaard, and uh, they have a strong team. Personally, I think the Giro, with uh, you know, with all due respect for the other participants, right? I think Pogacar can win that when he's 80, 85 percent. Totally, I agree. think he can win the Giro. <laughs> totally agree. Um, and then there's enough time to to be ready for the tour. Um, I mean, it's listen. It's good for us, man. It's it's going to make it very interesting. Yep. Yep. I, yeah. Yeah. Uh, my 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 question for you guys is: Which position would you like most to be in? Would you like to be the returning champ of Vingegaard? Would you like to be Pogacar, proving that he wasn't 100 percent last year? Would you like to be Roglic with a chip on his shoulder, changing teams, or Remco, who has a lot to prove as a GC guy? Which one's the best? Would you enjoy the most? I guess. 100% Roglic, 1,000% Roglic. I'm telling you, he, 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 I hope I wasn't trying to throw any shade or it didn't sound like I was, uh, it sounded like I was throwing shade, but <clears throat> absolutely, he's in the best position, I think. I agree, and he's going to a, a, a new exciting project. He's uh, he's uh, going into the season with a whole new, new motivation, uh, has a chance to win the Tour de France again, has been so close before. Um, now there's no excuses. Uh, so I think, uh, I agree. I like Roglic's position, but to go back to Pogachar doing the zero real quick, a lot of the guessing game has been taken out of it. I mean, these guys know exactly, they've analyzed so much data on the, each of their riders. They know exactly how long it takes them to recover from what type of effort, how long he'll be good again after a grand tour. Um, so they I'm sure they've got this pretty dialed in. Uh, we, we hope because last year we saw Pogachar winning tour of Flanders and being so dominant of a rider that um, we weren't expecting that, but I think they, they have a plan and I'm excited to see, um, see it come, come together this year. Mm -hmm. cool. What about the other guys? So we have, we have, uh, we have Pogacar, we have Vingegaard, then Remco. You know, well, first of all, uh, Pogacar, Vingegaard, Roglic and Remco to name those four. I think, I think it's safe to say, I mean, I wouldn't put anybody else next to them at this moment. Uh, you know, you could say, okay, you have Jay Hindley who won the Giro. Um, 
Bernal, yeah. Bernal looking good yeah. again. Bernal, who's got try. I mean, he looked really yeah. good at the Colombian championships, but hey, that's the Colombian championships. Okay. So he, he says, he says he has good feelings. Yeah. Uh, oh, shit. Mean, Wait, where George just dropped off. That's weird. He's <laughs> dropped off the zoom. It's a, a, okay. a guy, a guy, a guy from a, from a continental team one. So, uh, baby steps, baby steps. Look, you, you have the question marks around Bernal, right? He's, yeah. He's been very outspoken on, you know, he's feeling better and, and he's very curious, right? Then you have a guy like Carapaz, right? His tour ended after two days, right? All this hope and promise, you know, uh, big, big new contract, boom, tour done in a matter of days, right? Get, you got to be curious about that, right? There's guys, there. there's a handful of yeah, folks like that. George, uh, the Lance, there's no, Carapaz is, is not even close to those guys. I think at the maximum he can be he can be on the, on the third spot if if everything goes perfect for him, and something goes wrong with the others. There's well, no I'm, way he can be. Okay. I, I, I thought I thought we were talking about people on the third spot. So that, that okay, all right. Okay. <laughs> and then how how do you best utilize Sepp Kuss going into this season? Is he that's, right back uh, into his role? Yeah. That's the one we are not talking about. We should, you know, he won the Vuelta. Uh, it's I'm curious to see. You know, okay, Roglic is gone, which is obviously in Sepkus's favor uh and how are they going to use him you know uh he's now a grand tour winner so um but at the same time having a guy like Vingegaard who is you know the best climber in the world right now right uh it's going to be difficult for Sepkus to have his own chances in the tour um you know, he did start the Vuelta, however, not being the leader and he won it. So uh, it's up to the other teams to take, keep an eye on Sepkus, you know, and, uh, and you know, they can they can let them go, him go in the break because once he's up there, he's not going to lose minutes anymore. Yep. Yep. Yeah. It looks like he's uh, not going to do all three grand tours this year. So God, thank maybe, God. Come, maybe coming into <laughs> the tour God. a little fresher. A lot more confidence. Uh, he's yeah. been there, done that. Uh, yeah, Hopefully, he got a, a new him. contract. He should have gotten. A, uh, he shouldn't have got. He should have gotten a, a restructured deal from from Jumbo Visma, and he should have put in there. Look, I'm not doing three three tours again. Just not. <laughs> Fuck it. I'm not. No. I don't care. No. 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 Well, he's going. He's going to in Vuelta. He's going to in Vuelta. Uh, so we have uh, we have Pogacar who's doing Giro and Tour. Um, Vingegaard and Roglic focusing on the, on the tour, Remco also. And then, then we have Vingegaard who will also do tour in Vuelta and Sepkus also tour in Vuelta. Um, interesting though, I've gone through the, the programs of these guys and the two big dogs, Vingegaard and Pogacar will not meet each other until the start of the Tour de France. Wow. Not one single time. I don't know if that's on purpose or not, but it's interesting at least. But it's interesting for us, right? Right. I mean, it just builds. Yeah. It, it builds the hype, the hype machine. Let's keep talking about the tour and the other races. And also I want to spend some time talking about the women's Peloton because it, it's structured a little differently this year, which I, I think is interesting, but uh, we can talk about that. But before we do today's show brought to you by AG one, taking care of your health isn't always easy, but it should at least be simple. That's why for the last six or seven years, I've been drinking AG1 every day, no exceptions. And it's, they're just not, they're not exceptions. It's non-negotiable. It's just one scoop mixed in water once a day, every day. And it makes me feel energized, focused, strong, and ready to take on the day. That's because each serving of AG1 delivers my daily dose of vitamins, minerals, pre and probiotics, and more. It's a powerful, healthy habit. That's also powerfully simple. If there's one product that I had to recommend to elevate your health, it is AG1, and that's why I've partnered with them for so long. If you want to take ownership of your health, start with AG1. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase exclusively at drinkag1.com slash the move. That's drinkag1.com slash the move. Check it out. Also today brought to you by HVMN. Do you guys see this? They, they, they announced a new deal, speaking of Jumbo, right? Mm -hmm. That's sort of the first time HVMN has come out. And, and really, we know that HVMN is the most commonly used ketone uh, in the Peloton. But this is a big move, I think. Big huge. Move. Huge I move. I think it's a huge move. Uh, uh, already, already, you know, 
it's it's commonly known in the peloton a lot of teams have now said publicly that they're using ketones so i think for hvmn that's that's big big yeah that, that's a good one to 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 hit your wagon too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they, they did launch the world's first drinkable ketone in 2017. Ketone IQ is their latest innovation on ketones with uh, improved effectiveness, taste, and cost. Uh, ketone, by the way, is also now available at any sprouts throughout the United States. So for all you Brits over there, like sprouts, what's that? Anyways, uh, you can save 30% off your first subscription order of Ketone IQ at hvmn.com slash the move. Again, that's hvmn.com slash the move. That gets you 30% off your subscription. Last one of the day brought to you by Tushy. We talked about it last week. I, I, I still I still love it. I still love it. I, I, this thing pops up on my screen. I'm like, this is fucking amazing. Okay, I, I bought this thing for my wife. This is no shit. Full on ad lib. Here we go. I bought in my wife. We've only been married a couple of years, right? Y'all, all, y'all, you dudes, right? You know how it goes, right? Happy wife, happy life, all this stuff. She'd been talking about, but only been married two years, been bet together for 16. For the entire time, she wanted me to buy a $5,000 toilet. Okay. Has anybody else, George, has Mel talked about this? A $5,000 toilet? No, I haven't done that. Uh, what about Aaron? Is she, she, nah. Jones for, is she ever Jones for those $5,000 toilets? I'm like, Not are you yet. crazy? You're in there for 10 seconds. You want 5,000? I said, no. Anyways, I'm like, I don't know if I got it on Instagram or where I saw this thing. I was like, whoa, there is an option where I don't have to spend 5,000 bucks. And it's called the Tushy. And it's a, and, and by the way, if I, and I put it in myself, I, the shit came in the mail. I installed it myself and that was it. And it like got hot, sprayed water and she was happy. And I just spent five grand. It's unbelievable. <laughs> that that is a true story i should have her on the show honey <laughs> look i'm saving you dudes money all right anyways for a limited time offer our listeners get 10 percent off their entire order at hello check this out hello tushy that's t-u-c-h-y that's hello tushy.com use the code we do for 10 percent off and uh you know you guys can send us the forty five hundred dollars we saved you Hello, Tushy.com. We do. I love that story. I really do. <laughs> That's a good it, one. Just, it, it's, and by the way, before we move on to the latter part of uh, you know, post tour, post grand tours, I think we should also mention Brandon McNulty and Will yeah. Barter. Just had an amazing uh, Will to the Valencia. And uh, I know it's just early season race, but they were racing against Vlasov, Budrago, some of the best climbers in the world. McNul uh, McNulty rode away from them on a very hard climb. And Will Barta wins from a breakaway. So uh, Americans uh, to keep doing well this year so so far. Yeah, McNulty McNulty's impressive man. He's uh, and I've read an interview of his uh, of his team manager saying that you know they really believe in him. That basically you know they don't really they don't feel good putting him at the service of of the of the leaders because he can win any race himself, yep. which is true. I think the guys the guys a huge talent. You you know what else he's doing. He's getting better every year. Uh -huh. There's not, I mean, he came onto the scene and folks were like, whoa, who's this guy? But it's, it's so yes, but it's every year. He's just, he, he, he could do, I mean, we talked about Sepp Kuz. I mean, Brandon McNulty can do it all, right? He can climb, he can time trial. He's now got a ton of experience. He's getting better every year. You guys want to sit back and, and pick a dark horse for the season? That wouldn't be a bad one. Yeah. Yeah. I thought you. I thought you were going to say he's. What else, you know what else he's doing? He's growing a mustache. Well, I mean, look. This is listen. We we live in a day and age where it's, <laughs> there's this shit. This stuff is look. We don't get it, right? We, we're old, um, but that's just happening, right? There's different looks, and cycling's got you know every week. There's a different cool thing, and we don't. We just we just want to race bikes and watch bike racing. But yeah. Uh, well, they've got McNulty on the schedule for UAE. Uh, we'll get a look at that at the end of this month in Perry Nice. So they must see him as the one week guy, right? Uh, he'd be great. Well, I think races. I think it's it's a great way for the team also yeah. to to take pressure off the leaders and have a guy like perform at the beginning of the year. Um, it's a great. Um, we you know one one guy we haven't talked about. I, I want to ask your guys' opinion about what do you think the chances are for Remco in the tour. 
where can he get? You know, we're not going to talk about winning. Um, he did win one Grand Tour, the Vuelta, um, last year, two years ago. Sorry. What do you guys think? Where he can, where can he get at the Tour de France in his first participation? I'm excited. I'm like George, I'm, I'm George go first on that one. I mean, young the, guy. The, like the, the Belgian said, press is waiting for you. Uh, yeah. Boy, yeah. Young guy. Yeah, yeah, George, be, be, if you <laughs> expect to go to Belgium this year, which I know you do. <laughs> I'm going. Very, I'm going. very careful what you say <laughs> right now. Uh, by, the guy, not, by, the way, by the way, I am not going to Belgium, so I'm going to say whatever I want to say. But, George, just be real <laughs> careful. I got nothing but love for the guy who won the Welta. Um, he's dominated Liège, best only Liège. I was actually very excited to see the battle between uh, Remco and Pogacar and last year's Liège, best only Liège, because they were both on uh, very good form. So unfortunately, that didn't happen. We all know Pogacar crashed. But hey, man, a good Remco, incredible, world-class time trialist, uh, world-class climber, great team behind him, very good at positioning. He has all the tools that it takes to, to be on the podium of the Tour de France. Um, so... I'm going to go out and go and say that he will be on the podium of the Tour de France. Ooh. I, I have to disagree. I, I just, I don't see it happening. Don't That's it. it. Not gonna Why? <laughs> you got, you got to elaborate. <laughs> you got to say, I, the two, well, I, not the first, not this first year. I don't, I don't know. It, it's a, it's a different beast. It's not the Welta. It's not anything else. It's not a hard one day race. Obviously it's. I um, do. One thing, however, I think that's the advantage of, of Remco. Uh, for the tour is that I personally think the course is the three grand tours. It's what suits him the best because it has less super steep climbs. You know, it has long climbs where you basically ride. You can have, you know, you can you, you really use all your power for a long time. Um, this, I just, I, just, I would just like him to change his way of riding a little bit, his way of racing, you know, like be more conservative and, uh, look at the race as a three week race and not 21 one day races. Right. Um, that's obviously also something that his team needs to work on, but, um, I'm, I'm curious, I'm not going to make a prediction. I think he can, um, he said it, he said it, he said, you know, he probably, he, he wants to try top five. And I think that's that's an achievable goal for his I, first participation. I, I would agree with him on that. Look, I I I I put Pogachar, Bingagard, and Roglic in a whole nother class. Mm -hmm. And Rimko is not in that class. Not for now. Not, not, not for this first tour of his. He's yeah. just not. Those three guys stand alone. Now those, those guys are punchy and they take off, but Rimko stays in his own head. And paces himself back again and again and again. That's when he seems to have that one bad day. You cannot, you cannot but, have a bad day on the Tour de France. Yeah, you right. just cannot, right? Uh, I, I don't care how. I think, I think with you age, can mask it or how much you think you can um, manage it, you just can't. That bad day is that means you get thirtieth in the Tour de France. Yeah. Not but we've, we've we've seen him. We've seen him on mountaintop finishes, basically ride those guys off his wheel for a sprint finish. So he's got the punchiness. Um, like you said, he does occasionally have that bad day, which the race is over in terms of GC, but um, he's he's living and learning and getting uh, another year behind him, uh, another year further away from his bad injury. Um, so I think uh, it'll be exciting to watch him at the tour this year. For sure, it's going to be an incredible tour to watch those guys go. Let's not, that. let's not forget about that crash. You know, we are, we're, we're, it's, it's very easy for us to say, okay, ah, you know, but let you know. He had this horror crash there in, in, in Tour of Lombardy, which could have ended his career, could have ended yeah. his life. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm curious to see. Just, uh, I, think, I think the Belgian press will like what we say. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, and, and if he ever were to get to a point where he could and does win the Tour, now that is an amazing story. All of this pressure, first Tour win since Merckx, like that's, that's sort of... Uh, that's an event of the century kind of thing yep. for Belgian sport, for sure. So Lance, uh, I'm going to question you on your cycling history here. Where, who do you think the last Belgian Tour de France winner was? Listen, let's talk, about women's, let's, <laughs> let's, let's talk about women's. Uh, let's talk about women's cycling. Lucien. <laughs> yep. Anyways, the, nobody, <laughs> nobody remembers him, right? Everybody, they, nobody compares Remco to Lucien Benemp. Ever right? It's always the next Merckx. Yeah, yeah, of course, of yeah. course. Yeah. That's that's the storyline. Um, interesting, and for those who haven't paid attention, so the the women's tour, and we've seen this, which thank God it came back. It's been amazing, right? The women's tour, which 
uh, I think is um, under promised and over delivered, right? In terms of uh, the reach with the audience. I think people have loved it. I think the racing has been fantastic. Uh, I certainly know I've enjoyed covering it. Um, but, but it's always these, at least these first two editions has been right on the heels of the men's tour finishing. And of course the very first year they men finished in Paris, women started in Paris. So it was right there together. Uh, this year they split up the locations, but did start them the same order. Um, this year is different, right? There's a two week break. Probably. I, I don't know exactly, but probably because of, uh, the Olympics or the closing ceremonies or something going on uh, in France, but now there's a two week break. I don't think JB, you, you brought it up in the pre-show. I, I don't think, I don't think that matters. I, I think what we've seen from the women's Peloton and the action, it's been, it doesn't matter if there's a break. That's I mean, just my I, view. I, I hope people jump from one to the next. I just yeah. know how people are with habits. You know, when and we get into the first week of the tour, people are like, Oh yeah, the tour's on. Let's go check out the move. Taking that break is not good. Like we, I think our audience just went right from one to the next. Now, maybe the Olympics, which we'll be covering, will help bridge that. So it's not out of sight, out of mind. Yep. But, but we'll do our, our best to keep the audience engaged in that, that two, three week period thinking about it. And certainly looks like it's, it's Demi Vollering's right to lose. I mean, I don't, she's not getting any weaker. No, I mean, she's just coming. She's coming to her, to the front now. Agreed. Uh, you know, for uh, for grand tours and, and and big stage races, I think uh, this is the this is the new Annemiek van Vleut, and she's going to dominate the the women's the women's cycling for a number of years to come. Um, I'm curious to see though, you know, like the, their the dominance of her team, you know, on all different levels, uh, having Lotto Kopecky also there, and then having uh, Lorena Wiebes for the sprint, and uh, Marlene Reuser, um, time trialist. I've heard rumors that some of these ladies want to go look elsewhere, uh, leave the team and, and go to other teams. Name, uh, you know, for example, Lotto Kopecky is rumored to to be looking elsewhere to go to maybe Visma. Uh, when, that would make when, sense. Maria, when Mariana Vos will retire. Um, so that's going to be interesting. But I think it would be good if they're split up a little bit because... I they, agree. They have so much talent in that team that yeah. sometimes it can be a bit, uh, a bit boring. Yeah. I don't, I don't hate that idea. Yeah. Uh, especially the idea of somebody testing the, 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 you know, the free agency market, go ahead. Let's drive up, yeah. we'll drive up some salaries. So uh, sure, but sure. you're right. They, they, <laughs> they have a stacked team. Oh, show. Yeah. Yeah. And then before we mention worlds, I, I do think I'm going to jump backwards here a little bit because we we've got to talk about Mark Cavendish again. This is yeah a big storyline that we're all interested in. Yeah, top top uh, three storyline, JB. Top three storyline of 2024. It's For funny, sure. you know. I, I, watching, I agree. Watching yeah. this time of year on socials, it's like I, you think about Mark and all of he that he has accomplished. And you guys can relate to this. You're like, you've done it. You've had tons of success. And I see him on socials, like bunking with a roommate, traveling, racing right now. And you just got to go, oh my God, that's got to be so hard to sign up for. But man. Yeah, he's, he's, he's happy. He's in Colombia right now. He's been there for the last two weeks. And I'm actually having dinner with him on Sunday in Colombia. Going to go watch him in the last couple of stages. So um, I just haven't really seen him this happy and in this good of a place in a long time. Um, which typically with him, that means he's going to get some results. Um, and he's just, he's just fired up. He's, uh, he's having fun right now, which is really important for a rider like that. So late in his career is, uh, just, to, just to keep it simple and have fun. And, uh, once, once the pressure hits of the tour, he'll be ready. I mean, think about it. We just said potentially one of the top three stories of the year. Well, the year is 365 days. Even I know that, right. All he needs is one day, just one day. Pretty crazy. No, no pressure. No pressure. Big pressure, man. That's, <laughs> that was, crazy. that's a lot. I mean, when you hit, whoa. And it's not, you know, people could look at the tour. Oh, you have 20 shots. No, I mean, then you have to go down and it has to be, there's a handful of stages. Right? I think it. it's that the storyline has an unfortunate ending that it won't, there won't be Paris. We won't get that, that day. If it, you know, no. uh, because the tour is not finishing in Paris because yeah, of yeah. Olympics. that's a bummer. Cause that's, you know, think about a sprint that you've done over and over in your head, right? 
George probably can relate to that. Something you've just known by like the back of your hand, probably yeah. replayed it mentally a million times. That'd be cool, anyways, if it was the last. Although the last stage is not particularly easy, right? For the hey, George, I have a I have a mission for you. Now, now you say you have, you go to Colombia and having dinner with Mark. I want you to come back with the compromise. He he needs to he needs to say yes to uh, an interview with us for the Move Legends. Okay, no, I'll get we him. Have to have him on the team. We have to have him on the show. All right. Well, listen, if, if he's coming on the move during the tour, I mean, that seems like an easy ask. Should we, start, should we, should we aim higher? I don't, I don't think that's a big stretch. <laughs> he's going <clears> to, <throat> let me ask my sponsor. <laughs> let me ask the Kazakhs. Guys, are y'all, are y'all cool if I, you, you don't even, okay, good. You don't know that? Great. I'm like, yeah, I can do it. No problem. <laughs> They're like, what? <laughs> Lino loves you. I uh, I saw him in uh, Nice last September, and he said, "Please tell Lance I said hello." So I think he'd be fine with it. And then, what are you, oh, who boy. do you guys oh, predicting boy. for our 2024 World Champion? That'll happen in in Zurich. Well, it looks it's hard. hard. You sent the stats. I mean, that's it's hard. It's hard. Zurich's a hard place. I remember we used to do the World Cup there, the GP Zurich. It is. Man, is it hard? And it, I, I, you know, I'm hoping or assuming it goes over some of those old iconic climbs, the Regensburg, yeah. and it does it does. It is very, very punchy. Yeah. Um, what, what did you say the total vert was for the men's race? Four thousand five hundred. Okay, so fifteen for those thinking in feet. That's fifteen thousand feet. That is that's diabolical. A that's diabolical. a diabolical. Yeah. 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 It's hard to tell. I mean, right now it's too early to know who's going to be going well, but it's. You know, that's a definitely a climber's course. It's not going to be a sprinter's course. And it'll be one of those top GC guys that will be able to, I think, ride away from 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 the peloton there. I think it's a Pogacar course. Yeah. 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 Yep. And Demi Vollering. I mean, it depends yeah, no. how she comes out of the tour and how, you know, um, I mean, she's the best climber. So the last thing before we go, I, I, I want to, this is not so much on the competitive side. I just, I'm kind of what you guys, the uh, and gals that have listened forever know that I'm quasi uh, obsessed with just the management of the sport of cycling, the investment in the sport of cycling, the model, the business model of the sport. It's, it's, it's broken, right? It's a complete disaster. And you probably also know that, that I love the game of golf. And so it, I, you could combine the two and you know where I'm going with this. You've seen all of the activity in golf with, with the creation of, of Live Golf, which, which was, of course, funded by the Saudis, spent billions of dollars to, to create a rival league. Um, now, I just see the headline the other day that, that uh, PIF, which is the, the investment fund from the Saudis that invests in sports. And I, I don't want to get into the politics of this. We can do that on another show. Um, I, I just want to stick to the headlines. The, the headline said that they're looking to invest, what was it? $270, $270 million. $270 million into the sport of cycling. I, would, I, would, I, I don't know anything about this. It does not surprise me. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you've also seen these rumblings in the sport of tennis. Uh, politics aside, um, stigma aside, if this is true, that will shake up the sport of cycling. And yeah. I don't know how that looks and feels and how that plays out. But to, I don't know about y'all, but 270 Milski, right? That's paper, right? That's real paper. That's, the, that's basically almost the total budget of all the teams together. So, okay. So, and I, uh, I don't think that's a bad thing, right? I, 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 and y'all have heard me talk about this forever that we have to imagine this sport and, and, and view it in a different light and approach it and structure it, especially in a different way. And when you come throwing money like that around, wow. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't, again, I don't know where this ends up. Could be something, could be absolutely nothing, but, that's real money. And I, I just want to put it on y'all's radar. And by the way, it, it, it won't just be the Saudis, right? Think about this sport, right? What, what is the second or third biggest team in the world? UAE, right? We all know Sheikh Taknoon runs that. He loves cycling. He bought Colnago. He's it's his team. Don't think for a second, he's not sitting back going, well, what does 280 get me? Or 370. What is this? How do you hypothetically, what does this look like? How does it play out? Is it look at a new, new league? 
uh, well, all roads run through ASO. It's just, it's just, there's no way. Around. There you have it. That's I, I was I was waiting to say yeah. something about this. You know? All roads lead to ASO, and this I'm sure they don't love those headlines. Um, look, the PGA Tour didn't love the 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 18 wheeler that ran over them with live right but everything has to run through aso forget even forget the uci nobody even needs the uci right aso is the current king they own the tour it is their race without the tour you have no sport but with that race you have the entire sport right that is what they're thinking just putting it out there putting it on y'all's radar i am closely paying attention super curious yeah, it's it's you know I think I think it's gonna have a few hurdles to pass. You know, for the moment I see that there's six big teams involved. Um, I, personally, I don't think that's the right way uh, because um, we all know that solidarity amongst teams will never happen. Um, there there'll be a few hit and misses in my opinion, and ultimately, for the moment, ASO is not part of it. As long as they're not part of it, it's not gonna happen. Right. Uh, but they will ultimately be part of it. Uh, otherwise, there's not. That's. I mean. Um. Anyways, money money buys not everything, but a lot. So. Well, I want to tell this our audience real quick uh, before we part ways. Thank you for tuning in. Like and subscribe. Pass it on to your friends. Go check out some of the other shows we've done recently. There's a new uh, Sean Yates Legends interview. Mm -hmm. It is well worth checking out. You already teased it out. Eki's coming right on the horizon. Keep your eyes out for that. And uh, and then uh, right around the corner, the UAE tour will be covering on the move. Awesome. All right. All right, guys. Thanks a lot. Thanks for tuning in. Y'all have a good day. Thank you. Thanks, guys. <laughs>